Anita, tell me, tell me what we're looking at here. See, I can see a progression. Right, so these are decorated publishers' bindings. So publishers, they were, you know, they wanted to sell books. Right. So they figured out if you make a book pretty, people will buy it. Right? It's, it's because people do judge books by their cover. <laughs> and it's basic marketing, right? Yeah, yeah. Make it pretty, people will buy it. So this is a progression in time. Um, starting in the 1830s, 1840s, this was an early binding, right? It's pretty plain, not a lot of decoration. You have a simple, you know, titling on the spine. Mm -hmm. The fabric you see is patterned, right? Right, yeah, it's got a real... It's like an em embossed pattern on it. almost, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was, you know, that was basically the, the design of the day, and that's what the technology would allow. Things kept improving. We move into the 1860s. Um, now, this is the time of the Civil War. Ah, uh, so materials must be... Materials start getting scarce. So you have less fabric available, you have less metal available, so you can see the decoration on this, this version of Little Women. They've it's, gone reserved because... Right, they just, okay. they don't have the materials to do it. Right? You can't find extra metal. You can't find cloth. That's you can't. Amazing. And so during this whole eight, the 1860s, you see that the, 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 the bling sort of, yeah. it scaled down. Right. And it was just purely a, a function of scarcity. Fascinating. Okay, but clearly the bling is dialed back we, up here. We get past that <laughs> and we get into something that is more of a, a Victorian sort of aesthetic, right? Very, very ornate. Yeah. Bright colors, br brilliant red. Um, they used a lot of jewel tones. So there's greens and there's blues and there's yellows and they used a lot of gold. And you can see the whole, like there's a whole plate that was designed to decorate it. And this is, this is the, this is sort of imitate hand tooling, but it's industrially done, Right, yes? right. So this was all done with a plate, okay. right? And it would have been at least two pressings because you've got the black mm -hmm. and you've got the gold. And each one requires a different press. Right, exactly. Okay. Right. So you would have your, your plate made, see in the, the back is plain, oh. it's embossed, oh. but they didn't put the gold on yeah, the back. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that is gorgeous. Isn't it great? That's a gorgeous embossing too. Yeah. Oh, there's a gilded on the edges. Yes, yes, we're protecting the book. I had no idea it was a protective scheme. Yes, yes. That's really, It's beautiful, really, but yeah. it has function. Everything is functional, right? And then we continue on. So now we get into, we can press with more colors. This is re this design itself feels almost modern. I know it does, and it's from the, you know the late 1890s, right? Again, it would have been a plate, mm -hmm. and th they didn't use they didn't use any metal, they didn't use any gold. It's all just ink. But there's and there's two colors at least. Yeah. There's a black and a red. Yes. Right. So that also means that those are one press for each one pressing for each of those colors. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and then we continue on. This is 1900. Now, Look at that! I love the cute? good job. This is the best. This is just the best book. It is again also very again. It's, it feels like a, quite a modern design. It's right, really right. beautiful. It's, it's it's aesthetically just beautifully laid out. Really, um, lovely green. You've got a, you've got gold, you've got red. This custom text treatment where the letters are joined to each other. Yeah. So clearly hand. Right. Wow. So really, look, and I love this because the dog just keeps going <laughs> <laughs> front to back. And this, so, what, this is around 1900? Yes. Okay. And so there was a lot of thought put into the designs. The designers, they, you know, they would go and they'd find the very best designers they could. And, yeah. you know, the, the publishers would compete and get you know, the best designer. And, in fact, a lot of these books today, when you are collecting them, they are collected because of the designer, not because of the author, not because of what's in oh. the book, and not because of, it's because of the designer. The designer's, de designer's art is what is really important here. So I found myself wondering about this little MP here. Is that actually a designer's mark? Yes. Ah! Oh, so I'm not sure which one. Work? I'm not sure which one. I yeah. don't remember. But. So they would, they would have their monograms on the covers yes, themselves? Yes, they would, in, within the design, embedded in the design somewhere. Technology continues to improve, right? And so this is shortly after the 1900s. You get you know, more colors, more gold. This is again the 1900, this is around 1900. Yes, this, just after the 1900s, right? That's crazy to me how gorgeous that is. So, you know, and then, you know, this one was illustrated by Maxfield Parrish, so, you know, they were, they were going for really good artists. Oh, wow, and this is when illustrations were protected by exactly. tissue Oh my gosh, with printing on the tissue paper. Crazy. May I? So the, uh, yes, yes. Wow. So these would have been your, your deluxe yeah. publisher bindings. This is actually looks like almost a composite photograph. It does. Wow. I'm 
terrified of harming these. I just mm -hmm. love the printing here. Yeah. This is a deluxe one. Yes, and, and in fact, some of the, like, they would do um, series, like they would have a series of books and they would, they would commission an artist to do a series of covers, right? And so they would be like the same color scheme. This, this is from a series, this last one is from okay. a series. So there'd all be this, this sort of light blue, almost, mm -hmm. almost periwinkle. And then the artist would do like a variation and, and different, different themes. So it was clear that they belonged in the set. Yeah, yeah. And then you would, you would collect and buy the whole oh, set, that's right? that's great, yeah. And this all encompasses about 70, 70 some odd years of bookbinding technology and design iteration. It's about 80 years. 80 think, years. Yeah. Um, Cause then, you know, when you get up into the 1920s, then the dust jacket takes over and you stop having all these beautifully decorated covers. The dust jacket was obviously much more economical to right. produce. Right. Um, this costs money. You know, it was yeah. it's certainly cheaper than hand binding or leather binding, but you know, you're, you're spending a little bit more for this. Along comes the dust cover and then you go back to a very plain cover with a beautiful dust jacket. Um, now we talked about these having different presses for each colors, and right. I'm guessing that these pieces over here are examples of the of the pressers of the. Yes, well, so these are plates, right? right? So you can see that this. Oh, plate, this is the plate for this book. Right, and you can see that the the decoration. So sometimes you needed multiple plates because look at this. You have the leaves and you have the vines, but you don't have the grapes. And so that would the grapes. That would were be a another plate. plate. As right. was as the, was the the titling. So they would leave a space where they could do the titling inside. And so they could just, you know, they could crank these out, they could just press them, and then they'd add the additional decorations. The grapes are a different color. Right. It was the Riverside Press. Okay. And the Riverside Press was well known for making just really beautiful books. This book and this plate met at, at, at the some, book's birth, yeah. and then they've been hanging out ever since. Well, they are now. We, we brought them <laughs> back together. We, I love that. That so is awesome. We had somebody give us some of these Riverside Press um, plates. Um, because they felt like they should be preserved, right? right? Yeah. Um, and then this, this oh one. This gosh. one's great because it's it's this lovely dragon, and yeah. of course it's the reverse, right? Right. Um, now you know it's it's a relatively simple pressing because it's just the gold, mm -hmm. um, but it's just it's such a, a great piece of artwork. <laughs> well, and I mean the etching is so deep. I mean it had to maintain. Yeah, this is a really beautiful piece of equipment. And I also think I can see where there's some machining away yeah, of, right. of the body at the same time. So they're not using acid for everything. No, and getting rid they, of had a, they had a, a, they had several machines. They had a, a pantograph to like put the design on it and then they would machine away gotcha. the, 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 the metal that they didn't want, right? So. It feels um, somewhat magical to see the thing that made that thing in the book a hundred years later that they're still together. Exactly, yeah. And then last but not least, so so doing simple like, you know, bars and things like that, this, this you know, this was, you could reuse these, you could use them right, on different right. books, but you can see that it is the pattern that was used, yeah. you know, to a really pretty effect, really beautiful effect. Um, and they could have a library of these and sort of yes. assemble any kind of assembly of them. Exactly. You know, they could mix and match. They could, they, we've got more, like, so we've got, you know, like you could have this little frame and then you, there we have like a picture of a, a person who looks like William Shakespeare. Right, and right, then right. Then you might have like a, a, a small frame where you could put your titling. So they could mix and match. Now, the machine that would emboss the foil into into this book with this. You guys have one. That would be right? a stamping it, press. It's heating up? Well, the, the, these with the plates, they need a stamping press. Okay. A stamping press or an arming press or an embossing press. But just to do titling, uh, you know, just to put like titles on. And, yeah. and this was, this machine was really more for sort of the um, single practitioner. The publishers would be trying to move things really quickly. They'd be using big machines and exactly. tons of pressure and right, stuff right. like this. But we have a quick press, a quick print and it, it you could have your book bound and you would get your name put on it oh, so, oh this would be how you personalize yes, exactly. ah, so this isn't an industrial machine it's more of a, of it a was later more, bespoke. yeah I think it was more for um, you know like the the private book binding shop yeah um, and, and not necessarily for the publishers can we take a look we can tell me about this machine okay this is still totally functional, and it's, it's what, like 100 years old? It's I don't think it's old. that old. I would say it's probably 50, 60 years old. Okay, all right. Um, this is 
a, a, the all-purpose Halverson Quick Print, uh, and it's used for anything from a book to a steamer trunk. So this is really a machine for a bespoke kind of, I want to add my name after the Yeah, fact or if you are a bookbinder, you use it for titling things, so you would... That's a little of the foil. Idiot. Here we go. That's it? That's it. <gasps> okay, so I would probably want to check and make sure that it's... But See that was, I had no idea, it took so little, it's it, just magnificent. Well, the, the whole uh, force. Multiplier of the lever, multiplier sure. Of the lever. And, and there's an ancient, <laughs> these cloth covered wires are feeding this ancient heating element. And it's terrifying, yes. <laughs> when, you, when you stop and think about it, it's like, geez, give it a tug. Oh, really? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. You don't, you don't even have to push it that hard. Really? It's, Oh, it smells good, there too. There you go. Yes, look at that. I think I need to reseat my type. <laughs> that's the worst thing we learned today. So this must, oh, and is this a pressure? Oh, that's the temperature sensor. temperature. Oh, look yeah. at that. And there are different colors of foil. You could do yeah. red oh, wow. or black or what have you. This, working with this equipment must give you this great insight into into the past, it's like a time machine. It is a little bit, uh, and I, I do a lot of s stuff about the past and history anyway, so that this is just, it's both charming and this is really cool. And then you think, if you're the guy who's sitting there going, it's like time to make the donuts <laughs> right. over and over again. Really, yeah. uh, and it is a craft, they're still doing it at the, the government po uh, printing office. Really? Oh yeah. Um, is, is the lamp, did the lamp come with it when you guys acquired yeah. this? That is also operable. <laughs> For if you don't have your uh, machine in a brightly lit space. Yeah, yeah. Amazing.